Good morning. Welcome on this glorious day that the Lord has made. I changed it up on you a little bit, didn't I? Hi, welcome. To those who don't know me, I am Pastor Katie, um, the pastor here at, uh, one of the pastors, because you all are also pastors here at um, Lewistown United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad to see everyone this morning. Um, I just want to take out a minute um, to, uh, to make some announcements. Um, the first is, um, and I'm going to try to remember to do this all the time, but our flowers today on the altar, and aren't they Christmassy and beautiful, are in honor of Amy's birthday and um, in memory of John Poston. Um, and so we thank you for them. They're beautiful. Um, and Amy Creechy, right? Is that how you say that? Critchy. Like Richie, but with a cr. I gotcha. Excellent. Thank you for that. Are there any other announcements this morning? Gail? Fourteenth? Thank you for that. Um, for those of you who were unable to hear, there is a sign-up sheet in the choir room for the UMW Christmas party, um, which is December 14th, and also that Gail is looking for some help, either food donations or physical help um, for the memorial service um, for Bob Ketzel on Saturday morning. And um, so if you just see her and um, if, for some reason, the situation with COVID um, gets worse, then um, there will not be fellowship, but there will still be a service. Um, speaking of COVID, um, we have been um, by the county of Frederick um, recommended to wear face masks regardless of vaccination. It is not a mandate, but it is recommended. Um, so I thought I would mention that this morning. I know that some people are continuing to wear ma masks and starting to wear masks, and, um, and that, that's fine. Um, if we are mandated, then I will make sure that that, that is known as well. And um, while we are, are in this situation of flux, um, fellowship events will, um, will be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. But the good news is there's fellowship today. Yeah. Tracy, did you have an announcement? And will you be posting donations? I will. I know it won't give everybody a lot of time. Um, unfortunately, the schedules and Thanksgiving, we haven't had a children's meeting, but we will on Tuesday. So I will try to put out what I can today, if not today, um, on Tuesday when we're here, so that we can come in and see her. So thank you so much, Tracy. And look for that sign-up sheet so we can help out with the advent. and. Um, sign, your, sign your grandkids up. It's a, always a lot of fun um, when we do these children's events. So um, are there any other announcements? Sharon? Um, just want to remind everybody about the fruit basket. There's information in your bulletin today. If you have any questions, you can just give me a call. So call Sharon if you have information. If you need information about the fruit baskets um, and inside your um, bulletin is a nice insert explaining everything. Um, please take a moment to sign um, the registration of attendance found at the end of the pews. Um, and uh, is there anyone else with any announcements? 
All right then, let's read our centering scripture this morning. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And that is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 3. And that is for us to contemplate on as we enter into this time of Advent. Um, we do have a special treat this morning for our prelude. Um, Randy Stull is going to come and share with us a beautiful song that um, a certain grandma really wanted to share with us. So um, I'm, I'm pleased. I hope that you were able to read the bio that Shirley sent out in the email. And um, let, let us hear what his beautiful song is sharing. And it's called Joseph's Song. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold it. Good morning, everyone. Are you okay? Great. Hi. My name is Randy, Randy Stahl. I'm going to be performing Joseph's song for you this morning.
Thank you. Thank you so much. That was incredible and amazing. And thank you, Sherry, for putting that all together for us. It was wonderful. And thank you, Mac, for doing such a great job lighting the candles. It's our newest acolyte. Well, please rise as you feel spiritually and physically able for our opening hymn, Blessed Be the God of Israel. It's found in your hymnal on page 209, and the words will be up on the screen. Keep awake, be watchful. The Son of Man is coming with power and great glory. Hold your heads high, for your salvation is near. We light the first Advent candle, reminding us how God's promised Messiah will break into our time and space to show us the way of salvation. May we stay alert for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Our Advent song first verse is words on the screen.
Eternal God, in your providence, you made all ages in preparation for the kingdom of your, of your son. son. Make, Make ready our hearts for the brightness of your glory and the fullness of your blessing in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Pat? It's a hard act to follow, all this music. All right, we can go home now. Just kidding. <coughs> Just kidding. So here we are at the time of our service where we get to give thanks and praise to, um, to our God Almighty for all the blessings that he gives to us each and every day, and also to come to him in supplication for the things that we are unable to handle ourselves. Um, so if now's the time. Do we have any questions? Um, concerns this morning. Sharon. Um, for those of you who may not know, George Perry was taken back to the hospital yesterday. Um, so please continue to keep her and her family in your prayers and continue to keep Father Noah in your prayers also. Also Bob Perry because it's very difficult for him to be without his wife. Thank you. Liberta.
Shirley? The joy of Julie. <coughs> Ken? Yes, it's great to see some of the older people back in church. Some of the new guests. It's just a blessing to see all these people come out today. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for reminding us of that. Tracy. Thank you for sharing that. Adelaide, did I see your hand up? <coughs> oh, nope, Sherry in front of you. <laughs> Sherry? That seems to be o o Odell's um, lot in life. Everybody gives him lots of trouble. <laughs> so it's welcome, welcome, welcome home. And um, thank you again so much for your um, glorious gift that you shared with us. Any other joys or concerns, Tracy? Exciting. Thank you for sharing that with us. He's definitely been a big part of our prayers. Did I see a hand up over here? All right. Well, um, again, welcome to everybody who's come to church. But if hearts are clear, let's turn to the Lord. Gracious, loving, holy God, we come to you this morning with our hearts filled with joy for the abundance of blessings that you pour out on us, Lord. On this beautiful day, chilly though it may be, Lord, we just give you thanks. And it seems, Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. Um, we are just so thankful for the blessing of um, our pews being filled, Lord, some returning people, some new people, Lord, some special guests, Lord. We just thank you so much for everyone who came to share our service this morning, Lord. We give thanks for the joy of spending holidays with our loved ones, with Edna, with Julie, um, and just with family and friends that we um, don't normally get to celebrate with. It's been something special, <coughs> Lord. And Lord, we also um, give thanks and praise for the children's program, the kids giving, and ask for blessings upon the Advent activity, which will be coming up in the next few weeks, Lord. But we also come to you, Lord, with um, concerns on our heart, Lord. And so we lift up the Perrys to you, both Joyce, who has returned to the hospital, and Bob, who is at home um, waiting for his beloved bride to come home. Lord, we ask that you be with them and that you keep them safe and heal Joyce so that she is able to come home soon after rehab. Lord, we also um, uh, lift up Bobby Miller to you that he might continue to heal, um, that he might be joining us shortly in, in the next couple weeks um, so we can have him back in our midst, Lord. We ask that you be with Laura Smith as she is, um, continues to be on a ventilator um, dealing with um, with COVID, Lord, and, and all of this, Lord. And we also um, give thanks, but continued prayers for baby Weston, Lord, that he might continue to heal, 
that he can put on weight, that his lung functions are good enough, that he can be without the ventilator, Lord. And we just give thanks and praise for the progress he's made, the, the weight that he's gained, and the fact that he is able to wear clothing, Lord, which means that his skin is, is doing what it needs to do to, to protect him, Lord. Oh God, we just lift up those who are um, unnamed but in need of, of your constant love and, and concern and help, Lord, and let us have a moment of silence um, for those names to be lifted in our hearts. Lord, with the holidays here, Lord, and the weather turning colder, Lord, we just ask that you be with those who have no place to go, Lord, who don't have um, a warm place to sleep at night, who aren't um, secure in their ability to have another meal, Lord. We just ask that you be with them and that you be with us and give us the opportunity to be your hands and your feet in this situation, Lord. We ask for healing for those who are still suffering needlessly from, from COVID, Lord, that... that Lord, we just beg you to eradicate this, this disease, Lord. Um, but Lord, that we just ask that you be with the family of those who have lost loved ones to this disease and to any diseases, Lord. Um, but we just, um, as, as concerns grow for the rise in cases of COVID in our county, Lord, we ask that you help us to choose wisely how we react to it, Lord, and let us um, continue to um, keep ourselves and others safe during this process, Lord. <clears throat> and so it's with grateful hearts that we say thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who calls us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Moses, Moses continued to, to the Lord, your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among our fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you among, wait, what? For this is what you yourselves requested for the Lord, your God, when you were assembled at Mount Sinai. You said, don't let us hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, or see this blazing fire, for we will die. Then the Lord said to me, what they have said is right. I will raise up a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell the people everything I command him. I will personally deal with anyone who will not listen to the messages the prophet proclaims on my behalf. God's word for God's people. Amen. Thank you, Natalie. Please rise as you are physically and spiritually able for our preparatory hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. It's 196 in the hymnal, and the words will be on the screen.
please be seated as Natalie reads the gospel scripture for us from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28. And there will be strange signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil, confused by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon earth for the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a stand and look up, coming on clouds with power and great glory. So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up, for your salvation is near. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie, well done. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, as we enter into Advent on this glorious day, may we hear the words you wish to be spoken and understand them as you intend them. Bless us and nourish us. Amen. Well, here we are in Advent. It seems like just last week we were running around preparing for homecoming, and here we are already getting ready for the birth of our Lord and Savior. I'll be honest and tell you that over the years I have come to appreciate Advent because it allows me the time and understanding to appreciate the true joy of Christmas. As a child, I couldn't wait for Christmas to come. All I could think about were the presents underneath of the tree. <clears throat> and that feeling of anticipation was delightful, but overwhelming also. I remember giggling at the top of the stairs with my brothers, waiting to see if we could trick Santa into revealing himself to us and wondering what delights were in store at the first light. And the truth is, I was never disappointed, although I never did get to see Santa. But back then, I truly didn't understand about Christmas and why it was so important, even though I went to church and I knew what the Bible said. This year, I thought it would be interesting and a little different if we took a look at some of the hymns we sing during the Advent and Christmas season and explore how they are connected to the reason for this season. So each week, we're gonna take a look at our preparatory hymn. And this week, of course, it will be Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Because I would like to see, and for all of us to see, how it is a confirmation of the hope that God promised us. You see, the thing that makes this hymn special is that it is not a retelling of the nativity scene, but it is a reminder of how far back God promised a Messiah to the Israelites. Almost from the first day that God created the world, he understood that his people were going to need a savior not from other people or from nations, but from themselves. From the moment that Eve and the serpent had their encounter in the Garden of Eden, we have been in need of that saving. Throughout the Old Testament, the, e the Hebrews have been repeatedly imprisoned and set free over and over and over again. But God knew that these were merely temporary measures because as human beings, they were then and we are now flawed. So God made promises from the very beginning about sending a prophet to set his people free. You know, John Wesley gets a lot of credit for, um, for being the founder of Methodism, but his brother Charles was truly inspired by God when he wrote his hymns. 
And he wrote this hymn because he wanted to emphasize the fact that Jesus was that prophet that the people had been waiting for. Of course, the people were expecting a little bit more than a mere prophet. They were expecting a king, one born to set all people free, not just the Israelites, but all people. And this is backed up by Isaiah, who clearly states in chapter 11, verse 10, on that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling will be glorious. So we hear that Jesse, who is of the Israelites, one of his descendants will be this prophet, but it will be a signal to all the people, not just the Israelites. The nations, not just the one, shall inquire of him. And his dwelling, which will be the kingdom of God, will be glorious. God loves the world that he created, every bit of it. We know it's true because at Genesis 1, 31, it says God saw everything that he had made and it was very good. It was good. It is good. And yet God knew, he understood that while humankind was made in the image of God, they, well, we, are not capable of the perfection that is God. Perhaps if the serpent had never come to Eve, things would have been different. But I suspect that there would have been something else that would have caused Adam and Eve to disobey God. We were created to make our own choices because God never wanted blind obedience. Otherwise, there would never have been any opportunities for Adam and Eve to disobey him. What God wanted, what God still wants, is for us to intentionally overcome the temptations of the world and choose to be obedient to God. When God destroyed the earth by flood, Noah and his family were left behind to repopulate this great creation of God's. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't a last minute decision. God knew and was making it known that there are consequences for the actions of ignoring or unbelieving in the one who created the world. But God knew even then that human humanity was doomed to repeat history. So out of this great love that he has for us, God began to make it known that a savior, a Messiah, would be coming to set his people free. This promise became the hope of a people who were continually oppressed, freed and then oppressed again, due to their own inability to resist the temptations of the world. And the people were desperate for this Messiah to come. I imagine that the anticipation that they felt was much like that of children on Christmas Eve. Delight and anxiety and fear, filled with hope and wonder. And because history shows that God is a keeper of his promises, they knew it would happen. But as usual, they misunderstood what it meant to have a Messiah. See, being human, God's people interpreted the promise of Messiah to mean a mighty God who would smite the enemies of Israel and allow them to be victorious. But what God was promising was quite different. A Messiah who would come and show them the way, not by might, but by example. Jesus came as a baby to show, us this, to show us the way, not to wipe the world of sinners, and thank goodness, because after all, if Jesus came in and wiped the world of those who disobey God, who would be left? Nobody. And what made this promise 
extra special was the fact that God sent part of himself. He sent the son to fully experience as a human being the temptations of the world that you and I feel and still be God to lead by example. See, this promise of need, uh, this promise of a need for a savior is not limited to the world of centuries ago, to the Israelites. Right here and right now, we are living in that same need and experiencing the same hope as the Hebrews, that we will be saved from the consequences of our actions, of free will, of temptation, and of sin. And Jesus is that for all of us. But just like Adam and Eve, like Moses, like David, like every human being ever, we are destined to sin. We have a tendency to forget our creator and think that we can be our own gods in our lives, that we are the ones in charge. And yes, even though we have the benefit of hindsight because you and I know who Jesus is and why he came, we still expect our lives to be rid of oppression and justice by some kind of snap of the fingers. I know that we are all hurting. And some of us hurt more than others because this world is filled with disease, with sadness, with anger, injustice, with hatred and oppression. And we are all a part of that in some way. Sometimes we want to rage against it all. The illness, the grief, the financial woes, anything. And we cry out to God to help us to fix all of the wrongs in this world. And so God wraps us up in his love, in the Holy Spirit, and sends people into our lives who can share those burdens so that you and I are not ever alone. Sometimes, though, we just miss the cues. We feel lost and alone, and we are tempted to be disappointed in God because we just want it to be better. It's then that we must remember the good news, that Jesus came as the long-expected Messiah to set us free, not free from hardship, not free from temptations or illness or disease, but free from wrath, free from the doom of death and the prospect of hell. What an incredible gift that is to us all. See, the promise of hope that we speak of, that we lit the first Advent candle for this morning, is that hope of perfection, of understanding, freedom from pain, from earthly temptation, and the hope of restoration of love and friendship can all be found in that hope. We have the hope that we will be reunited with our loved ones, that we will know all that we need to know and that we can finally grasp the truth of the statement of being children of God. Can you imagine a world with no war, with no hatred, with no cruelty, where no one was ravaged by drugs or alcohol, by poverty, starvation, sickness, and disease? A world where you are not judged by your skin color, or your station in life, or your political affiliation? Just imagine, it seems almost impossible, doesn't it? But this is exactly what the promised hope of one tiny baby boy brings to us. When we hear the story about the Garden of Eden, we understand, at least I hope we do, that such a place exists and that it was meant for God's chosen people, which by the way is you and me. But we know that as sinful human beings, we just can't get there on our own. There will always be the serpent tempting us to disobey God. 
Because as humans, we can't truly understand the benevolence of our God. We think of God as being bound by our limitations and therefore lacking in the ability to love without any kind of measurement, just to simply love. Love like God's is very difficult for us to understand, and we tend to look for underlying motives. We want to know what the catch is and when the other shoe will drop. That is what the serpent preys on. But Jesus is the answer to that prayer. He is the gateway into the garden, the way in which we are able to return to the heavenly kingdom. And that, my friends, is the incredible promise of hope. Charles Wesley found a most beautiful way to express that hope. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation Hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king. Born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. What a beautiful statement of all that Jesus is to all of his people throughout the ages. As you and I embark on this journey of Advent, as we prepare for the fulfillment of the promise of a savior yet to come, let us take time to be thankful for the love that God has for us and the promises that God made to us and the gift of salvation and eternal life that is assured to us if we choose to grasp onto it. May it be so. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, we get so caught up in the everyday minutia of life that we sometimes forget to stop and take a breath and remember who we are and whose we are. As we go through Advent this season, we just ask that you take a moment to tap us on the shoulder and remind us of the promises that you gave for us. This week, may we explore the promise of hope and be gloried and deliriously happy in what that promise means. Amen.
Please rise. As you're able. Merciful God, we ask that you pour out your blessings onto these gifts which we return to you with a glad heart. Lord, please use them to further your kingdom and grow your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in the prayer to confession responsibly responsively thank you loving creator you call us to rejoice in your promise at the birth that is to come but we are afraid we long for an easy path into your promised world but you warn us that there is no easy way Hear these words of assurance. God's mercy and steadfast love endure, strengthening our hearts and overcoming our fears. God will remove every obstacle that keeps us from being the body of Christ. <laughs> Amen. Please rise um, as you are able for our sending song, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates, which is 213 in the red hymnal and um, can also be found on the screen. Thank you. I hope that you will all join us afterwards for a bit of fellowship. Um, let us be in prayer. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we stand before the Lord with a blessing of hope in our hearts. As we go out into the world, carry that hope with you. Show that hope to others. Be blessed by all you meet and be blessings to them in return. 
To those who are traveling back this week, safe travels. Thank you for being with us, Lord. Bless them and keep us all in your name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go with God. Amen.